is the confession that we had now was part from this book, uh, Daily Confession, which is available. And if you've never purchased this book from the bookshop, you can buy one of these. These are very good. People have been blessed by this book. And uh, various confessions on health, prosperity, promises after promises, names of God. And uh, this book is available downstairs. And we have sold thousands of copies of this particular book. And people have been so blessed. So maybe you should keep a copy with you. And also if you, I think we have CDs also, which is the book is entirely read. You can also purchase them if you wish to. Uh, many other books that are available downstairs and uh, you can purchase some of them, build your spiritual character and uh, be blessed, right? So everything that we do concerning our spiritual building See, we need to build ourselves up by reading good books. Now, we are very particular in what we sell downstairs, and we have put books that are in line with the scriptures, that are in line with the teachings. Uh, they're not our teachings. They're simply taken out from the scriptures, and we have uh, compared many other scriptures along with it and put them all together by the understanding the character of God. Teachings, we don't just pick up teachings just because somebody is an eloquent speaker and he brought some kind of an inspiration, but it has to be in line with the character of God. It has to be in line with the character of God. If God is good, then he's not going to do something bad. If God is love, then he's not going to do something that has to do with hatred. So we, 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 every teaching, teachings that are built along with the character of God, you will never regret. Because uh, anytime you go through the teachings, also understand what his character is and, and know by his redemptive names, Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord who, he, uh, who provides for me. Then we have Jehovah. Now the word Jehovah is simply in Hebrew and it's in, it, it means Jehovah Shalom and it says the Lord my peace and my prosperity. And also we have several characteristics of Christ through which understanding uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And uh, I receive, I can do nothing without the Father. So when you put all these things together, you, you, you build a healthy teaching into your life. You just don't take scriptures from here and there and try to make a doctrine, but we make sure that they are in line with the four Gospels. They are in line with the Old Testament and the New Testament put together and, and understanding the New Testament through the revelation of the Old Testament. The Old Testament talks about the Lamb of God and the New Testament, Jesus is the perfect Lamb of God. He became the Lamb of God for us. Now we don't carry a lamb and come and offer as a sacrifice. Now we believe and we have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. We have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't, we don't do things just to be doing, uh, but we believe uh, by having faith in the blood of Jesus, we overcome our situations. Moreover, we also uh, know that our sins have been paid for in full so that we don't live in condemnation. That's the grace of God. The grace of God does not tell you to live in condemnation for the past sins that you have committed and over and over again to feel that shame and guilt in your life because you are redeemed from the shame and the guilt that you have had in the past. And moreover, concerning even a, even a current situation that you have done and you have trespassed against the Lord, God is not going to send Jesus Christ to the cross again. Once and for all, he died for each and every one of us, for our past and for our present, and some find it so difficult and they kind of think it's too much when you say that he has forgiven you even concerning your future. Now why do we say that? Because Jesus is not gonna to come tomorrow just because you commit a sin tomorrow, he is not gonna come down from heaven to die for you on the cross and that was not a perfect sacrifice. He has taken care of sin once and for all so that you can live clean, you can live holy. We don't advocate people to live ungodly. We don't advocate people to live 
in sin, we encourage each and every one of us to be living holy and righteous before him. To live righteous before him, live as sons of God, as obedient children, that you are, you are in obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you do things now by the good conscience that you have within you. We all had a bad conscience and we, we actually didn't have a conscience to even think of. We just did what we felt was right. We did things in our own strength. We did things by our own way of thinking and we leaned on to our own understanding. But now we trust in the Lord. Now we trust in the Lord. And now we, as obedient children, we submit ourselves to the word of God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit who is inside of us, and to good counsel that we receive from godly men and women. And that's how we, we build our spiritual character. And not only build our spiritual character, we, we, we live in what we believe in and what we speak in. Uh, and, and we do things not against our conscience, but in line with our conscience, which is our conscience is, is, is the voice of the spirit, is the voice of the spirit man. And when Jesus came into us, we became one with him. We became one with him and our conscience now has become the voice of the spirit. Our good conscience has become the voice of the spirit. Now, when we go to do things, uh -uh, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, I've been watching this. Oh, oh, no, I shouldn't be watching. I understand. So I'm not, I don't have boundaries placed by people, but I have my boundaries placed by, by, by the conscience that I live by. It's, it's, it's by the conscience. And I say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I have I missed it. And you're forgiven immediately. He's not going to question you. He says, I've already paid for you. So what we do is we, 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 we ask the Holy Spirit to help us and, and help us make decisions rightly. We don't do things in our own, own will. I mean, our flesh wants to go one way and our spirit wants to go a different way. But God will never do against anything against your will. You have a will which is in the, in the soul, which is the part of your soul. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And the soul part of it is, is your emotions and your will and your intellect. So God is not going to do anything against your will unless you yield your will to his spirit and it becomes all the more easy for us to walk in the blessing of God when we yield us our, our will to the Lord and say Lord I'm willing to obey you I'm not just going to I'm not just going to make decisions on my own but I'm going to obey my conscience I have got a good conscience now I can hear the voice that's the voice of the spirit you're a new nature you have a new nature in you your old man has been crucified. And your old man was water baptized and he, and he came out of the waters of baptism as a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in your life and you, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. So enjoy walking in the newness of the spirit, not according to the oldness of the letter, right? So we, we had placed our boundaries, we had done things in our past and we couldn't keep up with it, but now we have been growing in the Lord and now we, we know we hear the voice of the spirit. Every person, every child of God can hear the voice of the spirit because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. In uh, John chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. So where do we go? We follow him. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. God says, I know you. Wherever you are, he knows you. We can't try to, 
do things by our own strength and kind of think, you know, we can hide things from God. God says, I know where you're hiding. God even knew where Adam and Eve were hiding. But he wanted them to own up. Own up. You missed your life. I gave you a beautiful garden. I gave, you every, I gave you power and dominion over every creeping thing. And that serpent was a creeping thing. I have given you authority and dominion. But you let the, that creeper take authority over you and have dominion over you. And you believed the lie of Satan than believing the truth that has already been proclaimed. You don't have to believe the lie of the enemy. You can just walk in the truth. There's so much of life in walking in the truth. You know, once the truth makes you free, you're supposed to be enjoying walking in the freedom of God. The truth makes you free. It doesn't matter how people think about you and it doesn't matter how, they, how their looks are towards you and what they feel about you. See, your no should be a no. When you say no, it is a no because that comes from within you. Anything against it, which means you are compromising. When I say no to something, I say no because I, I know it's against my conscience. I couldn't do it. Not that I can't do it, I can. I can do all things in the flesh. I can do all things. I have all the freedom to do all things in the flesh because God has not made us like robots. He has given us, he has made us free moral agents. He doesn't have the button with him and say, okay, now this is the time he's going to say yes and this is the time he's going to say no. No, he says, you make up your mind. You have wisdom. I have given you wisdom. And if, you, if any man lacks wisdom, he says, ask from me and I will give you. In James chapter 1 and verse number 5, if any man lacks wisdom, you know, this is where we get stuck sometimes making our own choices because we don't ask. We don't ask. James is a very practical book and James is the half-brother of Jesus who lived with Jesus, who was brought up with Jesus. And he's, he, he's, he's another son of Mary. And uh, James knew a lot about Jesus and his movements and his behavior. And uh, reading the book of James will give you a lot of insight concerning practical living. So in James chapter 1 and verse number 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, which is the most important factor in a man's life. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Ask. Before you make a decision, ask. It's good for us to ask him because he knows the end of every decision that we make. He knows. Every decision that we make, he knows the end of it and he knows the end result of it. And the one who is most concerned about you is the Lord himself. And he's not going to mislead you. He's not going to tell you something that you should say yes to and, uh, something, that you, and uh, something that you should say yes to and then you make it a no. And he's all interested in your life concerning you that you are to be benefited in everything that you do, every decision you make in life. So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Ask. Ask. We don't ask from him and we just ask from people. We ask from ungodly people. We ask from good men sometimes. Good people can make mistakes, but if you ask from God, he gives the right wisdom. He gives you the right understanding. He will, he will give you exactly what you need. Every decision is as a seed that you plant into the ground and in the days to come or months or years to come, you're going to reap the harvest of it. You will eat the fruit of your own decision. That's the seed that you plant. So ask wisdom from the Lord. Lord, give me your wisdom. I need some wisdom concerning my situation. What must I do? And he will talk to you. Maybe at the time you ask from him, you got to say, yes, Lord, I asked from you and I believe I received it. He gives to all men liberally. Wisdom is, I mean, when, when God gives wisdom, he gives to all men liberally. 
He doesn't have a he doesn't have a group of people. Okay, I'm going to share my wisdom with you, and and not you, you. Okay, and I'll pass by so many of them, and then okay, you're okay. No, he says liberally unto all men. Don't you don't you ever say, oh God, you love the preachers more, and you give the preachers wisdom, and you don't give me any wisdom. You want to walk, you want to let me walk like a dumb person. No, he doesn't want you to walk. He says, I. This is a secret that he gives to all. Liberally, freely. Wherever you are, in whatever situation you are, you can cry out to him and say, God, I need wisdom concerning this decision that I'm about to make concerning this situation, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need wisdom. And then he says, he gives on all men and he upbraideth not. He doesn't scold you. He doesn't, he doesn't pull you up and say, what do you mean? You want wisdom? No, he just liberally gives it because he knows we need wisdom. He knows we are sheep, and sheep are very innocent. We, we, we make wrong moves so easily. We make wrong moves so easily, and we, we, we hear the voice of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the devil. We hear the voice, of the voice of the wolf, and we get drawn into believing. Sometimes I say, I don't have, I mean, a voice of an ungodly person who no, doesn't have the Holy Spirit can be the voice of the wolf sometimes. And you can be misled, you can be stray, you can go astray. And God says, he gives to all men liberally, upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. It shall be given him. It shall be given. And the word shall, it, it means, if you ask, he gives. If you ask, he shall give you wisdom. Don't you ever say, oh, I asked the Lord, but he didn't give. But the next verse qualifies it. Go, let's go to the next verse. Verse 6 is, But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. So when you ask for wisdom, you've got to be in faith. Because God, give me, I mean, give me wisdom now, now, now. If it is now, then he will tell you now. But if it is two days later that you need to make a decision, he'll give it to you in two, in two days. Or if he does not speak to you, which means... Your decision has been already made and you're supposed to be not making any decision. He can talk to you through dreams. He can talk to you through visions. He can talk to you through the, through the preachers. He can talk to you while you're reading the Bible. He can talk to you even through a little babe. He can talk to you while you're in a conversation with somebody who is, who is a man of wisdom or a woman of wisdom or somebody who, who can hear the voice of God. There are times that some people can't hear the voice of God, so he might lead you to build friendships with people who can hear from God. He will make you, he will keep you, I mean, you don't want to associate with people who want to, who hear from God. But you, I would like to associate with somebody who would just pat me and say, okay, everything that you do is all right after all, I mean, no, not necessarily. God will, God will lead you to people who can hear from God, who can give you some godly counsel and advice, which is the wisdom of God. So you've got to ask him by faith. Lord, I ask for wisdom by faith. Now what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of, evidence of things not seen, which means you ask for wisdom and then you say, thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. You may not hear it all of a sudden. I mean, you won't have a, hail, I mean, you won't have a thundering voice. And you won't have a, an earthquake. You have asked for, him, for wisdom and believe that you received it. Nothing wavering. Don't waver. I asked the Lord, but he has not spoken to me. I mean, after all, 15 minutes have passed. He has not spoken to me. And then you, next, you see the clock. Oh, my God. Half an hour has gone. One, God, you have to speak to me now. God will speak to you. Believe. He is a gentleman. He is a God of integrity. If he said ask in faith without wavering, which means he wants you to stay stable, he will talk to you. But you want to make the decision now because it's, it's, it's very choice, it's very, I mean, it's very juicy, it's very, I mean, I, I, feel, I would feel good if I make this decision now. And, but God might say, no. 
You've not heard a voice from him and he still, he, you still can't hear him. And eventually you will find at the right time he will let you know and he will talk to you. He might even talk to you through circumstances. He might even talk to you through, through another person. He might even talk to you through something that has happened to another who made the decision that you were about to make. He will talk to you through, through that very situation. See, if you made that decision on that day, this is what would have happened to you, which has happened to this person. You'll say, thank God. Although I was in a hurry, Lord, you didn't give me the green light to make that decision. So I'm so thanking you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So when you ask for wisdom, ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, tossed and tossed. So when you don't, when you're the kind of person, okay, Lord, I want you to speak to me now, and, and if, you don't, if you don't wait upon him and say, thank you, Lord, I received my answer, I received wisdom, you're wavering, you still are in between, you're trying to push yourself into making the decision. That's the person who is wavering. Lord, I want to do it now, Lord. I mean, after all, I've been, I've been tempted and I've been waiting for this and this is, I mean, here, everybody is, I, mean, I might lose this. God says, ask in faith. Just like you ask in faith for healing. It's the same way you ask for wisdom. For instance, when you want healing, Lord, I thank you. I come to you in Jesus' name and I ask you to heal my body. And you know, your symptoms have not gone. But what do you do? You believe that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Oh, the pain is still there. Oh, the pain is still there. Oh, I mean, if you're still going to confess your pain, then you don't believe that you're healed. Lord, I thank you, I'm healed. I'm limping, but I still believe that I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, for you've healed me. And people around you might say, oh, but you better check. You may have had a dangerous fracture. Maybe you're going through a situation. You, you've got to make a decision. Oh, you say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, I'm healed. I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I'm healed. And all of a sudden, you start walking normal. And you say, because God heard you two hours ago or two days ago or, or, or one month ago, he already heard you. Believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it and you shall have it. Likewise, when it comes to making decisions, believe that God has already spoken to you. Believe that God, many people make the, make the biggest mistake concerning wisdom, concerning being led by the Holy Spirit because they ask for wisdom and, and they're wavering. Now they have the temptation of saying yes and no, yes and no. Now God has not been speaking and, and you know, you're not giving an opportunity for God to talk to you because you're wavering. Oh, I should make the decision. Oh, well, uh, maybe if I make the decision, oh, I should, but no also. But God says, forget it. Stay in faith, stay firm. Lord, you said to ask for wisdom. You said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, and he giveth liberally to all men. So I receive my wisdom. I receive my answer. I'm not upset about anything, Lord. I received. Oh, people will pressure you. People love to put pressure on you. And that's, that's the kind of people that we live amongst. They want, they want to have the credit because I pushed you into making this decision. But wait for the Lord because he knows the right thing. He knows the right decision that you should make. Don't ever push God. He's not going to be, he will never move. You can never push God. You can never twist the arm of God. God, do it this way, Lord. He said, sorry, find some other God that you want to. Not me. I'm a God who is stable. If I said something, I will make, bring it to pass. I'm not as man who promises things and don't do. Let me show you a scripture from the book of uh, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. And it says, whenever there is pressure, you will always find you're, you're forced to make decisions in life. So 
most of the time in the time of pressure that's that should be the time that you should never make any good decision or any important or any important decision when there is pressure around you you got to say wait i'm waiting for god i'm not going to move in verse 19 it says god is not man that he should lie god is not man no men lie or men because of their limitations their words turn out to be a lie i mean they are good sometimes they 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 kind of they they, are, they they aim it good they think okay i'm i'm doing it for the good but then eventually when th- when they are limited men are limited and when they have to lie they say i'm sorry i couldn't keep my word because this happened that happened or so and so pushed me into doing this so i couldn't fulfill what i wanted to but god is not man god is not flesh and blood that he is he's moved by his emotions god is a loving god he is moved with compassion but not through emotions not the kind of emotions oh yeah jesus wept what about jesus wept yeah jesus wept because he was he found so much of unbelief when he went to the tomb of lazarus the shortest verse jesus wept it says and people say oh jesus was moved with compassion no he wept because of the jews who were so hard hearted when jesus had already said that i am the resurrection and i am the life and they could not believe that jesus can raise lazarus back from the dead they said oh poor jesus he has a fell sorry and he's not man he's not poor jesus he is not man he wept he was grieved his own people could not believe that lazarus can be raised from the dead god is not man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent god doesn't say something and he doesn't say i'm sorry oh my my i'm sorry i'm going to take back those words i said something but then i'm going to, i'm going to, i'm recalling those words back because i i i can't fulfill it i'm not strong enough I'm, i cannot handle it i just said it just i'm that was the word that came out of my mouth and i'm sorry i'm whatever god speaks he's bound to accomplish it whatever god has spoken he's bound that's the reason he doesn't talk to many things whatever he has said in the scriptures we got to meditate them and he i mean every time you push him to talk to you go do this for me lord do this for he's not your servant boy and moreover he is not going to do anything that's going to bring disaster to your life the children of israel they put so much of pressure on god and said we don't want prophets and priests no more to rule over us we don't want prophets and priests to rule over us enough just like the other nations give us a king give us a king we want a king just like all the other nations and then when samuel took this request up to god god said samuel they have not rejected you they have rejected me to be a king over their life they want to be like the they want to be like the nations of the world but just go and tell them what's going to happen to their sons and their daughters when they appoint a king and what's going to happen to their lands and what 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 would what would what kind of pressure would come upon their lives when they have a king of their own they said we don't care but we want a king just you know sometimes we are adamant we say we want our way god god says okay you want your way have your way i'm not going to interfere have your king have your king so he they had the first king who turned out to be a stubborn hard-headed person and then they had another king and this king also he was he was a man after god's own heart one thing was he 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 repented quickly david was the second king that the that the children of israel had and thereafter they had kings all right along and they had all kinds of troubles because they said we don't want priests we don't want prophets we don't want to hear from from god let the king speak to us and that's how stubborn we can be sometimes but that's not god's will god wants us to submit to his will. and if you, if you, if you don't hear the voice of god that doesn't mean there's going to be a disaster in your life 
That means stay calm. I'm going to talk to you when it is needed. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Because he knows your temperaments. He knows us. And if he says no, we would anyhow do it because we have already made up our mind to do it. We just go to God just to get our approval. I mean, I've experienced that many people who have come to me and they have already made their decisions and they come to me as a, as a spiritual adult and, a, and, and, and to get some counsel from me, but I, deep down in my heart, I know they've already made their decision. They just want my approval. I said, do what you want to. Do whatever the Holy Spirit says. I don't have any counsel to give you because I know that you already decided to do what you're going to do. No point wasting our time. Your time is wasted. My time is wasted. You've just come for approval. I'm not going to approve anything that is contrary to the word of God. I'm not going to. How much ever you put pressure on me. And they go around and say, yes, I went for counseling and, and he, he told me to do this. No, I never said that. I said, do what the Spirit says. So God is not man. God is a spirit and he's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. God doesn't repent from time to time. He doesn't say something and he say, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm going to take back those words. Oh, yeah, I told you to do that, but then now. God is not a man that he should repent. He said, hath he said, and shall he not do it? If God said it, he will back his word. Hath he said, shall he not do it? If God has said something, you better bank on it and say, I know it's much more stronger than the banks of this world put together. If God said it, that settles it. I receive his word. And the wisdom that God gives you is wisdom from above. And the understanding that he gives you is beyond comprehension. And the way that he would speak to you and you would know for sure God is for me. And, and time will prove. You know, the devil is always in a hurry for you to make decisions. The devil around you, I mean, evil spirits around you and people around us, I mean, some of them are demonized. They want you to make decisions fast. And they want you to believe that if you don't make the decision right, if you don't make the decision now, you're going to lose and fail in life. But God has already prepared a better way for you. He says, the plans that I have for you are plans of good. In Jeremiah, he says, the plans that I have for you are plans that are good and not of evil. In Jeremiah 29 and verse number 11, let's turn to it and come back to this again. Jeremiah chapter, 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 Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 11. The thoughts that I have towards you are thoughts of peace. And the word thoughts also is to be understood as plans. For the plans that I have, that I think toward you, said the Lord, are plans of peace or thoughts of peace. So God is thinking. He's planning things in your life. As much as the devil who is crooked, who is evil, has plans for your life to destroy you, God says, I have plans for your life. I have plans for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I have plans for your life and plans and thoughts towards you, say the Lord, are thoughts of peace. And that word peace, there means shalom, which is peace and prosperity. I want to prosper you in my way. I want to bring peace into your life, not the world's way, but my peace. Jesus said, the peace that I give you is not of the world. The peace that the world gives you is very expensive, very costly, and very destructive eventually. Let me show you that. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Jesus said, I give unto you peace. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Peace I leave with you, who is speaking Jesus. Peace I'm leaving with you. My peace I give unto you. My peace. What is God's peace? Prosperity, goodwill, 
success, do well, stay calm, free from confusion, not as the world giveth. So there is a peace that comes from the world, which can be so costly, so destructive in the end. You know, we always use this word, just to keep peace, I'm doing this with you. That can be done in marriage, where there is a covenant that has already been built. If there is no covenant, you don't ever have to use that word, but I'm just doing it for the sake of peace. You don't have to. For the sake of a marriage, to save a marriage, you can say, okay, because there is a covenant there, because there's, a, there, there's, a, there's an offspring there. For the sake of the offspring, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to stay at peace. You're going to say, yes, for, the, for peace's sake, I'll, I'll just, just to stay peace. I, I just want to stay calm. But when it comes to a decision that you're to make, you can say, I don't care whether you feel it right or not. I'm going to choose and I'm going to go with God who says the peace that he gives is far more superior and greater. The peace that God gives us is a peace that comes from above and we have no confusion at all in it and it has no destruction. It only has peace which has so much of calmness, which has so much of boldness, which has so much of power in you that you can crush and bring Satan under your feet. That's the peace that God gives you. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't you let your heart be so troubled with the thoughts that are coming. Am I going to move? move? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? But I should. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled and don't be afraid. If God, he, he works with individuals. Number one, he works with individuals. You are important to him. Every one of you are important. He works with individuals. He says, peace I leave with you. And my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. The world gives you a peace. And it, it can be costly. It can be so cheap in the beginning. Oh, just a signature. That's all. I mean, after all, you don't lose anything by doing it for me. After all, you've been a friend of mine for so many years. But you don't even consider way down the line what disaster is going to happen just because you signed on a piece of paper. Just because you are pressurized or somebody who just came along with you and said, now come on. What makes you keep away from doing this? But it's going to be costly at the end of the day. And everything boils down, you say, oh my God, what a foolish thing I made. It's a bad decision. That's the reason you've got to hear the voice of peace. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15. And let the peace of God rule your hearts. That word rule means let the peace of God be your umpire. Let him be the umpire in your hearts. If there's a disturbance in your heart, don't ever make a decision because you're heading for disaster. You're heading for disaster. Let the peace of God be your umpire. If you said something, that's the umpire's word is the law. If he said something, that's it. Because he has already plans for your life. And the scripture that we read in the book of Jeremiah, he said the thoughts that I have towards you are thoughts of peace and not of destruction, not to give you an evil end. But thoughts of peace I'm having in my mind to give you an expected end. So let the peace of God rule your heart through the which also you are called in one body to be thankful. Just be thankful and let the peace of God be your umpire be, or be the voice of God. Be the final decision in your life. 
and be thankful. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I'm hearing the voice of, you know, you, you become spiritually enriched. Even physically, you grow healthy and also financially you can be blessed if you only with heed to the voice of the spirit. You're going to be so enriched Walking in the spirit is the greatest, is the number one factor. And you'll be so strong and thick and tall are you at any time. And so peaceful are you. When things are running all out against you, you're still at peace. No trouble, you're not moved. They can't shake you because you're, you're so much at peace. And to be thankful. You can always say, oh, thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord. It's not that we're rejoicing, looking at somebody's downfall. We are only thanking the Lord. For me, for myself, I, I didn't take that path to me. When I was pressurized, I went to the presence of the Lord and asked him what I should do. And he said, don't do it. So I'm thankful for that. While all those who were around you made those decisions, the decision that you were, you were the only one who rejected probably. I said, you said, no, I don't want to do it. And they have gone down the tubes. You're not thanking God for that, but you're thanking God for saving you. You're thanking God for saving you. You can always call upon him in the day of trouble. He'll answer you. But why would you want to get into trouble when he always has kept you in peace and want you to always enjoy what he has for you? So choose to walk in the peace of God. In Romans chapter 16 and verse 20, if God said it, will he not make it good? He will make it good. He'll always do it right. Romans chapter 16 and verse number 20. When you walk in the peace of God, it says like this, and the peace of God shall bruise, crush, bring to zero under your feet, under your feet, Satan. Satan the troublemaker, the destroyer of the families, the destroyer of friendships, the destroyer of true friends. When I say friendships, I'm talking about true friendships. You can't, you can't call those fair weather people as true friends. They're only around you just so what they can get from you. They're just fair weather. You can even find some fair weather so-called Christians who can be around you as long as everything is okay with you, but then eventually they'll not be around you. That's the reason you've got to make up your mind and say, I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to hear what the spirit says. I'm going to ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. There is, you know, there's a beautiful phrase we heard from, from our church. Delay is not denial. I just remember we had a, in our church we had a, uh, 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 a woman who used to prophesy and, and her, her gift was prophesying and she always would say delay is not denial. That's true. God doesn't work with the time clock that we work with. We think there's a delay but there is no delay. God is perfect on time. It's a delay in the flesh for us but never a denial from him. Never a denial from him. If he said it, wouldn't he do it for you? He's always do it. He'll make sure that he'll keep up with his word. And he can. So don't get into this position where you say, I can do if I want to. Yeah, that's doing it in the flesh. But you always ought to say, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 you got to be 
like this. Philippians verse chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things. I can do all things. The most important factor there is through Christ. Through the voice of the Holy Spirit. I can do all things. Now I know everybody would say. A lot of people would say. I can do all things. I can do a lot of things. I can do, I can do all things. But not through Christ. Through the flesh. Through their emotions. Oh, I can do all things. What's so big about listening to a sermon on wisdom and asking for wisdom? I can do it after all if I want to. That's flesh. Why would I want to spend my time and come here and listen to a message that God wants to give you right into your heart? When I can do all things, I can do it. I have enough in store. Like the rich man who said, I have enough in store, I have too much, I'll just take my ease. And God spoke to him that night and said, today your soul shall be taken away from you, and whose with all these things belong to? Because that man was not rich towards God, he was a poverty-stricken man, although he had enough and more riches in this world. He said, I can do all things. I can just... Take my ease. You really can take your ease if you can understand the scripture. I can do all things through the hearing of the voice of God who strengthens me into doing all things. Not my flesh, not my emotions, not what I have in my possession, not what I have in my possession and, and what I possess now. I feel good about myself. I'm all right now. You can only, you're so, you and I are so limited if we take the word through Christ out. I can do all things who strengthens me. Who is the person who will strengthen you? Your flesh strengthens you. Your flesh, your emotions are up today and down tomorrow and way high up in some place and down in the dumps the very next day. That's what we can, we live in, in a kind of a world that we think, oh, all right, that's the reason we can do all things through the hearing of the voice of Christ. When God says no, let it be a no. When God says yes, let it be a yes. Anything more than that comes from the wicked one. That's what it says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 37, Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 37. Quickly we go to that scripture. And he says, let your communication be yes, yes. Means if, you say, if it is a yes, let it be a yes. If it is no, let it be a no. Let your communication be, oh, I can do it by myself. Oh, it's all right. No. A simple yes is good enough. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he says, okay, I'll do it. You say, yes, I'll do it. And if it is no, I'm sorry, no, you can never make my yes a no, no, a no, yes. For whatsoever is more than these cometh from the evil or cometh from the evil one. Anything more than this. If your yes is not a yes, and if your no is not a no, it comes by an influence of the enemy. It comes through your emotions, evil emotions, created by our own selves, or Satan himself would put pressure into us. When, you may, when your conscience says no, but your emotions says, come on, you can do it, it's not, a very, it's not a very big thing. Nobody knows about it after all. Nobody knows it but you know it. But it's all right, you do it. Your emotions will say do it. See, the devil is always there to make your no a yes and a yes a no. That's what you've got to be so watchful about. That's the reason the Bible says be sober. Turn with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 7. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 7. 
See, when you have all this pressure coming into you, you've got to say, I cast all my care over to the Lord. I've been pressurized into making decisions. I've been pressurized concerning situations. I've been pressurized concerning my future. I've been pressurized about what's going to happen tomorrow. Go before the Lord and say, first thing, first and the foremost thing, Lord, I take all this care and I put it on you, Lord. All this care, I just put it on you, Lord. I don't want to carry all that care. For he cares for me. If God is the one who is caring for you, why would you want to be so careful about so many things? You know, when people say, oh, take care, I said, you keep it to yourself. Sometimes I have to voice it out or sometimes I, I say it, at least I could whisper it, I don't want to take that care. Why do I want to care? That's a nice phrase. I mean, you think I mean, you're, you're so concerned about the person. Take care, brother. No, you keep that care with you. I don't want it. Because the Bible says, cast all. He didn't say keep a few. Cast all your care upon the Lord. All your care upon the Lord. Whatever it may be. A, a situation in the home, a, a cat situation, a dog situation, a husband situation, a child situation, a roof situation. Lord, I just cast his care over to you, Lord. All is all. He wants you to walk a carefree life that gives you confidence. Confidence. A person who is free from care has a lot of confidence. He's so confident. He's not afraid because he's cast all his care. He knows, God, you're in charge of this. I know if, you, if you're going to be awake all night long, worried and caring about all these things, you're only eating the bread of sorrows. Psalm 127, it says, and verse number, Psalm 127, we'll come back to the scripture again. Psalm 127, one onwards. Let's read verse one. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. That labor it, that labor in vain, that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh up but in vain. The next verse. It is vain for you to rise up. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. Why do people rise up early? Not to, face, not, not to seek the face of the Lord. They rise up early for this reason and sit up late for this to eat the bread of sorrows. What is the bread of sorrow? The bread of sorrow is carrying all that worry and care you find it so difficult to go to bed. Oh my God, I'm concerned about this, I'm concerned about that. So they're just worried, worried. They're so worried about everything around them. How can you make a peaceful decision in your life? When God is your source and he's very much alive and he says, I'm the Lord, your God. I'm the Lord, your God, your provider. I'm the Lord, your God, your healer. I'm the Lord, your God, who is your healing. I'm the Lord, your God, for everything. It's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late. People rise up early, the very first thing is they are worried. Go to bed. I mean, they hardly sleep, actually. Some sweat, not because the climate is warm. They sweat because they haven't slept. Because they've been worried even in their sleep. They're so, so worried about everything else. They've never taken the peace of God into their hearts and said, God, the day that I got saved, my life changed. And my life was altogether yours. I don't belong to myself now, so why do I worry? I belong to you, Lord. When you say Jesus is Lord... You're saying, Lord, I'm not the breadwinner in the home. You're the bread provider from this day onwards. And we always look to the breadwinner. I'm the breadwinner after all, you see. You must understand. No longer. The day that you died, when you received Jesus into your life, you died. The breadwinner died and you have become 
one with the one who provides bread for you now. He's your bread provider. One of the meanings of the word Lord is he's your bread provider. You're no longer the breadwinner. He has become the bread provider for you. So for you to keep up late and also to rise up early to eat the bread of sorrows is eating. The bread of sorrows simply means that you're so careful and concerned about everything else and you don't want to even ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom and understanding, guidance, who'd provide for you. He'll provide for you. He will give you, he'll give you guidance and wisdom to eat the bread of sorrows. Eating the bread of sorrows is worry, worry, worry instead of worship. Turn that worry of yours into worship. The word worship means, Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. I'm just trying to make myself worthy by worrying, but I'm just saying, Lord, I cast all my care over to you and I'm worshiping you, Lord. I thank you for the peace of God. I thank you, Lord, that I am the sheep and you're my shepherd and you will lead me through the green pastures. I thank you, Lord, ye, or I walk through, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you have placed before me a table in the presence of my enemies, and my cup runneth over, Lord, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are just worshipping him. Lord, I just worship you. Turn that worry, which is worshipping yourself, and turn it to God and say, God, I cast all my care over to you and I'm worshiping you. No more worry, I'm going to worship you and you will hear the voice of God and he'll tell you rightly to make the decision. Do you know that your body is his house? Do you think that he would want this house to be destroyed? Your body is the house of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. He paid to purchase, I mean, he he paid his precious blood to purchase your body so that he can come and live inside of you, so that he can move through you, live through you, talk to people through you, touch lives through you, bring wisdom to people through you, bring salvation through you. People say, if God appears to me, I'll believe. They wouldn't believe. God doesn't have to appear. Let them just look to the skies and say, oh my God, the beauty. There has to be a designer. They don't want to worship the designer and the creator. But they want to see what's happened to your life. And you're the perfect witness. And you're the witness. You can testify of what has happened to your life. You're the great witness. Wherever you go, God goes with you and God says, now take, speak to this person. I mean, you can just be around them and talk to them and they would feel, oh my God, to be around you is so peaceful. To hang around with those complainers, I mean, it's so terrible. I'll better hang around with you because there is so much of peace and you can sow seeds of life and somewhere down the line, the word of the Lord will not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish the purpose which it is sent for. And you're carrying his good word. Wherever you go, your life is manifested. Your life manifests his glory. So waiting up, waking up early in the morning, waiting up till late, to eat the, just to eat the bread of sorrows. All that timing is gone just to be worrying. And he continues to say, he said, for so giveth he, So he giveth his beloved sleep, or in other words, you're his beloved. I like the word beloved because that's how you call a family member. You're in the family of God. You and I, we are family. He says, I give you sleep while you want to worry. But I give you sleep. He can talk to you while you're sleeping. Not by while you're you're worrying, He can even talk to you. And moreover, he wants you to take rest. It's a luxury for a person to sleep well. 
You don't have to use alcohol and tablets. I mean, God gives you because they are all having side effects in your body. You don't even realize after many years you regret, why did I have to believe the lie of the world that if you drink a little alcohol that you can sleep well? When you're destroying, how many cells are you destroying in your body by taking alcohol into your body? I know some of you don't know, but I don't think anybody here does, but still for all, we are talking to many who are around. Why would you want to believe the lie of the world when God says, I give you sleep with no pills or any kind of, any kind of a thing that would drug you into sleep? I give you sleep. Why would you want to take drugs to sleep? When God says, I give you a good night's sleep. And I also give you some sweet dreams. I mean, so many scriptures, I don't have time to go for all that. What time is it? I left my watch at home. Huh? Okay, we're going to close. Shut it. One scripture, I'm going to shut it. 12.30. <laughs> right. The scripture that I went to is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. I enjoy what I do. I just don't feel tired at all. When people say, are you tired? I say, no, I get more energized when I, the more I speak. I get more strength when I speak because I speak the oracles of God and the oracles of God are life-giving and they are powerful. Okay, we're going to close with 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. Be sober. Don't be drunk. Be sober. Be vigilant. That's military language. Be sober and vigilant because your adversary, your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He can't devour all, but he's looking for people whom he can devour. He can't devour everybody. He can't destroy everybody. But he's looking for some weak character. Somebody who would say, yeah, I'm just fed up of life. I feel like committing suicide. I, I feel so lonely in this world. And you're the perfect candidate for the enemy to come and sit on your shoulder and say, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, everything is gone. All your sorrows are forgotten if you just go down this stream. You can just forget your life. And he give you lots of ideas, but you're going to say, no, I'm sober. I'm vigilant. Because I know my adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, looking, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Heavenly Father, you have spoken to us wisdom today. We thank you, Lord. You said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. And you upbraid not. Ask for wisdom. So, Lord, we ask in faith. And Lord, we thank you that you provide us with wisdom and understanding to make the right decisions in life and not to make the wrong move at the wrong times and not to associate with the wrong kind of people at the wrong place at the wrong time because it brings disaster. So Lord, this day we thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord, that Satan is under our feet as we walk in the peace of God. So Lord, we thank you for keeping us strong and healthy and thank you, Lord, that your plans are always good for us and they're not evil. They're always there to give us the best of all things. We commit our lives to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's partake in the covenant meal.